Welcome back to Moose on the Loose. My name's David. Today we have more Arrive Can't Arrive scam updates. Government of Canada gave money to these three IT companies. GC Strategies, which is a company that only has two employees, uh, Christian Firth being one of them. This is a guy who, who changed the resumes of these two people from Bottler. He hired Bottler to make sure they qualify as someone to do the, the Arrive Can app. This guy, Christian Firth, pocketed millions and got Bottler to do the app for him. The Auditor General was brought down to testify at a hearing on October 12th, and the Liberals adjourned the meeting. Is this not corrupt? On top of this, the Auditor General only found out about the RCMP investigating the Arrive scam from a, from a, a media report from the news today an emergency meeting is being called this committee has asked for the the auditor general to appear to discuss the the report on arrive can this is ahead of the scheduled report being tabled to parliament in mid-february is my understanding and i for for a couple of reasons i don't think this is uh the right way to go brock you have the floor for six minutes please uh, the Auditor General on October the 12th, 23, on a recess week, appeared before this committee and unfortunately her testimony was cut short when the Liberal NDP coalition brought a motion to adjourn the meeting after it was revealed that the government nor the CBSA informed her that the RCMP were investigating allegations of misconduct with the CBSA. She in fact only learned about it after reading a news article in the Globe and Mail. With that in mind, has the Prime Minister and his government been open and transparent by releasing all documentation as requested by your department? We make our requests for information directly to the departments and agencies involved in our audits and we have received uh, the responses that we expected from, uh, from those agencies and departments. Your office has a mandate that when you uncover some element of criminality you are to refer that to the RCMP, is that correct? When we identify issues that could raise the, the potential of criminality, we do identify for the RCMP. The RCMP has been already uh, informed of a matter by the Canada Border Services Agency. At the government operation uh, committee level, we have seen unprecedented levels of misinformation uh, being shared by order, government chair. officials. Point of order, Chair. Yes. Why are we bringing in uh, information from another committee? Uh, this is the, this is the Public Accounts that's, Committee. Can we deal with the Public Accounts uh, mandate that's, Chair, relevance? That's, that's, that's hardly a point uh, of, of order. Uh, Mr. Brock has the floor and is well, welcome to reference. Something to note here. That woman who just objected to the point of order, they like to break uh, a train of thoughts. It's, it's a really dirty tactic. And... If you notice too, my previous video where Trudeau comes out of hiding and just babbles a speech at his caucus, the woman who just objected is the one who kept on chanting six more years for Trudeau. <laughs> uh, six more years. Let's say, okay, okay, okay. Just something to think about. Well, my liberal colleagues don't want to shed any sunlight with respect to these allegations. The Conservative Party certainly does. CBSA officials appeared at government operations, deliberately misled the committee. The biggest outstanding issue is who was responsible for and who chose GC Strategies. This two-person consulting company who performed no IT work, who received $11 million of taxpayer money towards the Arrive Can total expenditure, clearly receiving the, the taxpayer-funded lottery in the process for doing absolutely nothing. This is a hot potato. It's kryptonite to the government. It's kryptonite to government agencies. Were you able to determine, sir, with the documentation that you received, who was responsible? What department was responsible for choosing GC strategies? Again, the Auditor General will be best positioned to, to describe the findings of our, of our audit. Has the government or the CBSA informed you that two whistleblowers who came forth at committee last week or two weeks ago uh, were actually suspended without pay, that being Cameron McDonald and Mr. Antonio Utano, who both worked for the CBSA. Were you informed by the government of that? So I am, I am aware of that. Um, I cannot recall whether or not I first found out from the government or whether it was in watching um, the committee hearings. It was around the same time, but I am aware of those, uh, that situation. Thank you. I am very concerned about uh, your ability to um, um, 
to access information from public servants in conditions where those public servants have been subject to intimidation. Um, with that in mind, I, I wanted to briefly move a motion, and the motion is that the committee report to the House its grave concern about apparent reprisals against witnesses following their testimony on the ArriveCan app. Um, this, is, this is critically important for the integrity uh, of of, Point of the order, kinds Chair, of investigations is this a notice of motion or undertake. is it a moving a motion? Uh, uh, may I respond to yes, that? Yes, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm moving the motion. It's on the, it's on the matter at hand. Yes, it's on the matter at hand, and I'm moving the motion. He literally said, I'm moving the motion. This, these liberals are just... I swear, they were looking at his eyes and, you know, the wheels turning as he's trying to formulate what he's trying to say, and then that's when they, they jump in there really to mess with your head and not be able to get out what you're trying to say. It's dirty tactics, man. I, I, think, I think the committee will hopefully be able to dispense with this quickly. Um, uh, to, to, review, to review the facts very quickly, we had testimony at the Government Operations Committee, uh, explosive testimony uh, from Mr. McDonald and Mr. Utano. In particular, they identified that a number of other public servants uh, either lied directly or were not honest and forthright with the committee. After their November 7th testimony, later that month, they received letters saying that they were subject to investigation. And while that investigation is still ongoing, uh, these public servants have been suspended without pay. Uh, it's an incredibly unusual step that public servants would be suspended without pay in the middle of an investigation uh, into their conduct when, when no findings have even been, been reached and that they would be informed of that investigation immediately after they provide frank testimony to a parliamentary committee. And this, this speaks uh, to the ability of public servants to be able to provide honest answers to important questions that are asked without fear of intimidation. And it speaks to the right of parliamentarians to actually get the information we need to get to the bottom of the Arrive Scam scandal. Uh, nobody wants to own up to giving this company uh, this, this contract, a company uh, that, uh, again, does, does no IT work, subcontracted all the work uh, and, uh, and, and got a big payout in the process. Nobody in the public service wants to own up to giving them that contract. Uh, and now when we have two public servants who come give frank testimony, uh, they are subject to, uh, to disciplinary measures immediately after that testimony before an investigation uh, has even taken place. So he's basically suggesting that because these guys spoke up, that's why their pay was taken away. And there, it's it's true. There's something weird going on there, but there's also these these other quotes here, which is, it makes it seem like at least one, maybe both of them, are in on it. The thing is, these guys named uh, Aaron O'Gorman as being part of it. That's when afterwards, two weeks later, then they lost their their government funded lawyers, which I've got listed here. Their security clearance was revoked. Min Dong called these guys with a threatening phone call. <laughs> <laughs> it's. I have a feeling that it's probably all of these guys involved. Uh, somebody's got to be going to jail. And this, um, this is, is gravely concerning. I believe it, it is designed to send a message to public servants uh, that they should, uh, should shut up uh, and, and not uh, reveal the truth to committees. And that is not a message uh, we want sent. So I hope that this committee would uh, consider supporting this motion to report to the House its grave concern about apparent reprisals against witnesses following their testimony on the Arrive Can app. I think the Liberals are splitting hairs for a reason, and this uh, clearly goes back to their disdain for anyone who would dare challenge their narrative, anyone who comes forward and points out the truth. And here we have two Liberal members trying Another to... Another point of order, Chair, I on relevance to, to this motion? Well, relevant I, to this I think, motion, uh, Mr. McCall, I'll turn things back over to you. I'm trying to say before uh, the Liberals continue to try to interrupt any disagreement with their uh, uh, their point of view or perhaps any investigation in their continual uh, ineptness or corruption, I think this is very important motion that Mr. Jenis has put forward. I think this is something the House needs to hear from. I would just like to say that we are here apparently to... <laughs> The interpreter has to, like, use the same tone of voice, apparently. <laughs> so this is the woman I was talking about. She's the one who was who was chanting, six more years, six more years, 
six more years of Trudeau, basically, uh, at that, that caucus meeting. This woman, watch out. That's a snake in the grass. She is a snake. Brenda Shanahan. Watch out for that one, folks. Uh, make a bit of publicity for a meeting that's going to happen eventually in this committee with the Auditor General. This woman's corrupt. Like, give me a break. What's a request for unanimous consent? No. Is yeah. there agreement? No. Well, I can tell there's not agreement. So, Ms. Shanahan, oh, back okay. to you, please. Thank you very much. I'm about to wrap up, indeed. I just wanted to make sure that everyone listening in at home understands that our committee is working on the Arrive Can issue. <laughs> yeah, sure. We are working with the AG. This meeting is a sideshow. <laughs> Everybody knows what's going on and what the Conservative Party is trying to do. I know that other people want to speak. And Get her a jail I look forward cell. to listening to my Bloc Québécois colleague as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think it's important that uh, we, we go back to the actual motion that was introduced probably 45 minutes ago. The committee report to the House its grave concern about apparent reprisals against witnesses following their testimony on the Arrive Can app. That is the motion. And what we have heard from the Liberals and the NDP is anything but the importance and urgency of this particular matter. The House needs to have this matter before it so that all members, all parliamentarians, have a chance to speak to this. You know, Ms. Shanahan uses comments about urgency and how important this is, and we want to telegraph to Canadians that we're taking this serious. We take our job serious. But she forgets exactly what happened October the 12th when the Auditor General appeared, and after they were embarrassed, the entire Liberal bench embarrassed, as well as the NDP, that the Auditor General you know, you, 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 Ms. Shanahan, you can laugh all you want, but Canadians are watching me, and they're watching you laughing at me, and it's not a good look. <laughs> you and your party and the NDP deliberately shut down the ability of the Auditor General to answer questions for Point a two-hour period. Ooh. Yes, Ms. I, I am being spoken to directly, so I would like... <laughs> He's laying it on thick. I, I love that guy. He's awesome. Larry Brock, what a what a good person to have in Parliament. Okay, to uh, respond a, to that. that is and a, and there is there is no shutting down going on. We were proceeding with this work on Bunny Dufal. Thank you. And um, Mr. Brock, that he doesn't like the timing of it. Um, I'm sorry. Thank I can't you. help him there. And she can remind Canadians of what she did. But the fact of the matter remains that after they were embarrassed, that the government did not inform, nor the CBSA inform the Auditor General, who was starting an investigation now that the RCMP were involved, was an absolute embarrassment. The Auditor General confirmed she only read about it, knew about it, after reading the article in the Globe and Mail. I was the one that asked that question, Mr. Chair. And the moment I concluded my round, this was the first round of questioning to the Auditor General, the first member of the Liberal bench who had the floor moved to adjourn, which I believe was Ms. Ms. Khalid, who moved to adjourn, and they had the votes to adjourn the meeting, thereby wasting the ability of the Auditor General to shed light on the full parameter of this Arrive Can audit, and now, over the course of several months, which is the genesis behind the wording in motion number two, we have direct evidence that two senior members of the CBSA, Mr. McDonald and Mr. Antonio uh, Utano, pointed fingers and identified the president, Ms. O'Gorman, and the past president, Mr. Ososki as well as Mr. Christian Firth, had deliberately misled the Government Operations Committee. They informed the committee that they had evidence to produce to the committee to confirm their findings, that it wasn't just a he said, she said. They actually had witnesses who could come to committee to, again, support the findings of both Mr. McDonald and Mr. Utano that our committee, 
that this government, national government committee was deliberately misled by the CBSA. That is something that the Auditor General should be concerned about. In exchange for that testimony, they both received letters from their new respective employers, Mr. that they were now suspended due to allegations of misconduct, were brought to the attention of the CBSA in November of 2022. And Ms. O'Gorman testified a number of times, Mr. Chair, at committee, that she took that very seriously, so much so that she did an internal review, found that there was a prima facie case, and referred the matter to the RCMP for a full investigation in November of 2022. But interestingly enough, which goes to the heart of this motion, it would appear that the findings in support of the suspension without pay for McDonald and Utano were only made after they testified truthfully and pointed fingers about CBSA officials lying to committee. Yeah, this is, uh, so basically she filed that November, 2022 and a year later then she, after she's named as part of this uh, arrive scam, then suddenly those guys moved on to new jobs in different departments. They're removed without pay. Their government funded lawyers are taken away. Eh, this something stinks. Something's really stinking in the government. And it's not just Justin Trudeau, his stink trails all over the place. And all his, his liberals are, uh, they're all stinking of the same funk here. But these shenanigans that are happening right now with the professional federal public service is disgusting. And we owe it to Canadians, we owe it to the Auditor General, we owe it to all parliamentarians to shed as much light on this as possible. Mr. McDonald and Mr. Utano are both on medical leave, supported by, by documentation from their respective doctors as to what personal health toll they coming forward has had on them, the accusations, the death threats from, from, uh, from the Canadian public that they have received is concerning. So what about those witnesses? What about those witnesses that they said will come to committee and support and corroborate what kind of shenanigans the CBSA has been involved in at the taxpayer's expense? What kind of message does that send to the other professional federal public servants? And let's talk about how unusual this is. The former clerk of the Privy Council, Michael Warnick, chime in. I cannot recall any other instance of such public disagreement. It is an outlier. Suspensions without pay are also rare. At this point, I'd, I'd like to seek the agreement of the committee uh, to proceed to a vote on this. I just put, put, put the question to the committee. Is there is there agreement to proceed to a vote or unless I'm, see, I'm seeing no. So from from where are you seeing no? Well, I, I hear no. Mr. Point, point of her, I, I'm saying yes, uh, Mr. Oh. Chair. Yes, let's proceed <laughs> to the vote. Please. Well, great. Would members like to vote? Yes. Great. Yes. OK. Shall the motion of Mr. Genuous carry? Yes. <laughs> Ms. Bradford. No. Mr. Chen. No. Ms. Kelly. No. Ms. Shanahan. No. Ms. Yip. No. Mr. McCauley. Yes. Mr. Genuous. Yes. Mr. Brock. Yes. Madame Sinclair de Gagny. No. Mr. Johns. No. Again. And it is defeated. At this time, I don't think that Mr. Hayes is in a position to answer any of the questions. As the report hasn't been tabled, will not be tabled until February 12th. So um, with that, Chair, I, uh, I will move to adjourn this meeting. So basically, they're moving to adjourn the meeting so they don't question the, uh, the representative of the Attorney General there. It's, it's exactly what they did last time. It's, 
except they're they're hiding under the guise of like, oh well, we're going to wait for the report on January uh, February twelfth. These these people are representing the government and they're trying to get to the bottom of a scandal apparently. But if they actually cared, they would ask some questions. This is disgusting. Shall the motion to adjourn debate carry, Ms. Bradford? Yes. Not, sorry, not debate. Sorry, the meeting. Sorry, Ms. Bradford. Yes. Mr. Chen. Ms. Khalid. Nope. Mr. Nope. Mr. Brock. No. Conservatives believe in accountability. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, 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 I agree. Madame Secretary de Gagne. Oui. Brock is a legend, Mr. man. Mr. Jones. Gord Johns, man. That's my representative. I am not happy with that slug being my representative. This meeting is adjourned. So you can see here, Garnet Genuis is pulling out his phone. And so I got the video for that. He starts recording a, a, a video here just to show off and expose exactly what just happened here. We got that up. The NDP just adjourned in the middle of the meeting. We had a uh, representative of the Auditor General's office coming here to testify about the important work the Auditor General is doing investigating the Arrive Scam scandal. Liberals, New Democrats did not want to hear that testimony. So the NDP Liberal Corrupt Coalition adjourned the meeting in the middle uh, after we had barely had a chance to get any questions answered. We also tried to move a motion expressing our concern about the intimidation and reprisals against uh, against witnesses who have spoken out against what happened in the Rive scam, and the NDP Liberal Coalition defeated that motion. Absolutely shameful. This is exactly what we expect from this corrupt Liberal NDP coalition. They did the same thing when the actual Auditor General appeared at this committee on October the 12th. One round of questioning brought from myself as a Conservative. This is shameful. We'll continue to pursue the truth. Uh, this is just unbelievable. It's like the same thing over and over corrupt liberals we need some once polyev gets into power we need some new laws that protect canadians to put canadians first so this can never happen again if we have to put in the pitchfork law that if <laughs> if we if if we deem necessary we will show up at parliament with pitchforks like we need something we need some either some sort of other governing body that holds the rcmp to account Maybe it's military governance that is not related to RCMP or whatever it is. I don't know what it is, but the corruption is rampant. That's all I got for you guys today. Be sure to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button. If you're looking for something a little bit more chill, I have a silent hiking channel. It's bootsteps in the forest, calm, peaceful, relaxing, put on where you're cooking, eating, relaxing, studying, whatever, something like that. If not, I got some more Trudeau madness. Be sure to subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.